right, welcome back to another episode of Single Saints Who Try. Today's episode is just a simple one, and it is called Open the Door. This episode was first born from a conversation I was having with my adult sister, who's also single, about the dating pool in today's day and age. And we weren't really complaining, but let's just say we were definitely examining a lot of the interactions, or lack thereof, that we've had with men lately. Now, maybe not everything I talk about today applies to you specifically, so don't take it personally. And obviously, there are many types of singles listening to this podcast, but for now, I'm giving dating advice from a man and a woman's perspective. If this doesn't fit your desired gender roles, please just take what you can and apply it to your situation. Now, overall, from a woman's perspective, the amount of brave and socially aggressive, dateable men is sadly at an all-time low. Meaning, for some reason, it's a lot harder recently or lately it seems to be to get men to make the first move. And I know this isn't the case with some of you men, but it is a big enough issue that many women can attest to feeling socially frustrated when it comes to men not asking people out. And it is a big enough issue that recently, leaders of my specific church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, have recently had to remind men of their role in initiating relationships, if you will. And I will talk about this talk later in the week on Instagram by Dallin H. Oaks, so make sure you join in with that. Now, on the flip side of that, I have heard a lot of reasons why men don't feel comfortable approaching women these days. Rejection being the biggest one, but also relatable human worries like not being prepared enough to be in a relationship, not thinking you're good enough, Um, issues with addiction, financial scarcity, or just good old social anxiety. I've also heard a lot of people, men and women, say that they, they don't feel the need to take action in person because they know that they have a shopping list, if you will, to scroll through on their phone later on a dating app. So, all of these are totally relatable at this point for most of us, and today we're not talking about how to fix those things specifically, But we are going to talk about creating space for two people to have the option of starting a relationship, or what I want to call opening the door. So what do I mean by opening the door? Well, let's just get something out of the way. Some people are okay with women making the first move, and some are not. So whether or not we as women want to ask someone for their number or ask someone out on a date, There's always a step that can come, you know, before that. And this step can be applied for men too, who may need a little more time to get up the courage to ask someone out or to make a decision if they actually like somebody. So opening the door is what I want us to think of when we identify a potential person of dateable interest. I guess it could be applied to friends too, but regardless, when someone catches your eye, either with a personality or with looks, Start looking for ways that we can form that basic level of acquaintance, aka opening the door. So, even if you're a woman who doesn't want to do the asking out, or a man that's afraid of rejection or dating in general, this is a great first step to put ourselves in a situation where we can better assess and bring ourselves to the other's attention and leave the door open to developing into something more. Now, what could this look like for us? Well, plain and simply, it's getting out of our comfort zone. Sadly, that is really the only option with anything in life, right? This week at church, we talked about the word radical, as in making radical changes in your life. And wow, I just loved it so much, you guys, in so many contexts. But I think using radical changes or approaches to dating has so much potential to get us the results that we would never see otherwise. So when we see that person that we've zeroed in on, it's our job to make the connection. Are they sitting across the room from us? Move to sit by them, or at the very least, beeline it after the event to make sure you introduce yourself. You walk into the classroom and see a seat next to them? Don't sit at a comfortable difference. We need to take the seat that's available next to them. That is our shot. What about when we're awkwardly standing in line next to someone we find attractive or we can tell that they're a pleasant person? It's our job to strike up the conversation. That's really the most important part to opening a door. It's just talking to someone. It doesn't matter how scared we are or how dumb we feel or the first topic we can come up with. Maybe you just feel so dumb and you end up talking about the weather. Who cares? All that matters is that we're doing our part to create that initial conversation 
that opens the door to connection. Okay, so maybe we chickened out at the end of the event. Good news, we can always try to take to the internet. Maybe we can't, you know, if it's someone you saw at Costco, you probably aren't going to know who or what to search. So you're kind of out of luck there. But if you are with your friends, a friend group, or at a church or school event or work event, take it from me as a woman, there is always a way to track down a potential interest. That's what we women like to call FBI mode, okay? Don't be creepy. Don't break any laws. Always take no for an answer if you've already talked to this person. But in a good way, if you have come across someone that you didn't get up the courage to talk to, do not call it quits. Find a way to make the connection. Open the door. There's absolutely nothing wrong with following up after an interaction or a missed interaction and saying, hey, I saw you were here and I didn't get to say hi or... Hey, I saw you and thought you were really cute and I would like to get to know you. Just be honest and find the way to make that connection. Find a way to open that door. Some other radical ways that we could do this are giving people our numbers that we may come across briefly like workers at a restaurant or a store and leaving the ball in their court. Um, But at least, you know, we know we didn't miss the chance because some people you're pretty sure you're never going to see again. You could also add someone on social media after meeting them briefly in a group Or you could even send the first message on a dating app. Using a dating app to break the ice with people in your community. I seriously love this. I love seeing people that I have admired in my community, but it doesn't matter if neither one of you are willing to send the first message, right? So that's a perfect way to open the door. We could ask someone in our church or school to go to the next church or school event with us. We could ask someone at our job or even a customer maybe. You have a reoccurring customer to join in on your lunch break. Or we could even start asking friends and family to start setting us up with people they know. Or maybe a mutual connection that you have been interested in. All of these are great options and I'm sure there's a ton more that I'm not even going to talk about today. But start taking those radical steps. And another way I've recently been thinking about a lot to radically change up or open some doors for you in your life is to change where we're at. So if it feels right to you, we can always change up where we go to church or where we work if you really want to get bold. Or if you're at school, change up where you eat or study. Or if you really, really want to radically give yourself a fresh start, move. (laughs) I kid you not, there's nothing wrong if you have the capability. If we have the ability and the urge to, to take a next step in life, there's nothing wrong with considering moving, literally, or a move in some area of your life. Now, obviously, this doesn't guarantee that we're going to meet somebody, but it's always healthy to be progressing and not be stagnant. Sometimes getting a fresh perspective or a literal new setting in life can help us open doors to so many things, including dating, honestly. So, taking bold, radical actions to open the door for ourselves or others to join us is maybe exactly what it's going to take in today's day and age to make progress socially or romantically. Even if nothing comes of it, you get rejected or you just end up making a friend, all those are way, way, way better options than just never knowing and living in limbo, you know, or missing out on potential connections. If you're a woman and you've opened up a conversation for a man to decide if he's interested in you, Or if you're a man that has asked out a woman, even if it doesn't go the way that you want, you still check that person off the list, you know? Now we can move forward knowing if they're an option or not. And maybe building that relationship for someone to feel comfortable making the move takes more than one time. Takes a few times, you know? If it's someone that you know you're going to see repeatedly, that's okay because every interaction is honestly worth it. Every time we decide to approach someone, we are taking a productive step in determining if they are a potential candidate. You know what I say, a lose-lose is a win-win. Even if it doesn't result in dating, we are still winning because we just opened that door and now we can let that option go and move on to the next. So it's so much better just to know if there's a possibility there with somebody. I have a recent personal bad example of this, you guys. I recently went to a huge singles conference and I was brave enough to try out the speed dating and it did not go well for me, I'm not even gonna lie. They sat me at the wrong table and I ended up with people out of my age group and it just felt like such a waste. 
Even though it was great practice, not in a mean way, but it's always good to learn how to interact with people, right? Well, meanwhile, while I'm sitting at this table with people 10 years younger than me, I'm looking around and I see this really, this person I think is so cute and I just, I'm so sad that I'm not at his table, right? <laughs> and I think he's so cute and the girl next to me tells me that she thinks I should go talk to him and I'm like, okay, I'm going to get up the courage. I'm going to make this opportunity count. And he is the cutest person I have seen at this whole two-day conference. Now, I'm not someone that usually likes making the first move and I'm also kind of like a if they wanted to, they would type of person. So forcing someone to interact with me has not been my usual motive. But let me tell you guys, after this thing, <laughs> after this experience, that is why I'm talking to you today about opening the door because we will never get where we wanna go and we are passing up on opportunities that other people might not even be aware of that you're crossing your fingers for. So because I was in such a big room, it was literally a room of about 2,000 people doing the speed dating, I just knew if I didn't make an effort to talk to this guy, I would never see him again. And he was my highest level of interest at this whole convention. Well, after the, after the speed dating ended, I thought to myself, well, I will try to walk by him. And if he doesn't talk to me, then it's just not meant to be. So sure enough, I tried to pass him and I kind of passed him. Like in the moment I thought, oh, well, it just wasn't meant to be. He didn't talk to me. But looking back, I was probably about six feet away in a massive crowd. Like what was he going to do? Throw his car keys and hit me in the head? So I just turned around on my heels and went and found my friend group and said, oh, it wasn't meant to be because I did lose him after that. I couldn't see him and I should have followed him. So that was my first mistake was not being aggressive and actually making the connection saying, hi, how are you? Oh, dang, you know, I wish you were, you would have been at my table or whatever dumb thing I would have said. But I didn't know if that connection was a possibility because I didn't try hard enough. Well, the story gets more embarrassing, you guys. I haven't even told my friends this, but a few days later, I was on my dating app and I came across this guy and I knew it's because he had swiped on me when I was down there and here it was just staring me in the face. And granted, I will give myself credit, I wasn't exactly sure he was the type of person I was looking for after reading his bio, but I had a second opportunity to open that door and make that connection and I didn't take it. And I panicked and got rid of him and I was like, well, I'm sure I'll come across him again if it's meant to be. Well, that is the second time I said I will come across him again if it's meant to be. It can only be meant to be so many times, you guys, because it's up to me to open the door and I didn't do that and I may have lost a really good connection. So that is a perfect example for what I'm talking about today. I didn't take the in-person opportunity and I didn't follow through with the at-home homework of making up for it. So I really encourage all of us to have some thick skin because it probably won't always go according to plan, but also some bravery because it could really pay off potentially. It's so satisfying at the end of the day to know that we took ownership of our life and opened the door to someone that we are potentially interested in and giving them the chance to take us up on it. So much better than sitting in silence and crossing our fingers or going home and realizing that you may never see that cute or nice person again. So my challenge to all of us today is if there's someone you are currently interested in, or the next time you're in a situation with a perfectly good candidate, start up that conversation, open the door, take whatever radical approach it takes to create that opportunity for the two of you to click. Best of luck to all of us and I will see you guys next time. Thank you for listening to another episode of Single Saints Who Try. Follow us on social media or listen on any podcast platform. Comment on YouTube or DM us on Instagram for any Single Saints stories, insights, or questions. We'd love to hear more from you as a single saint who's trying. And don't forget to join us again next week for a new episode.